what is going on everybody? Hello! <laughs> it is Pixel Partners here and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. We left off. <laughs> we got fucking Mr. T Gray on the, the stand here. The chain looks like the tiger's spine. Uh, maybe it is. <laughs> Actual tiger's spine. Just a random, spine. random observation, sorry. So we got him up here and everything's going like... It's gotta be this. And I had a thought. What? With this. You see, I've never been to Trey BN. And I looked at <gasps> oh, the semi obvious the thing. The, the, match, that's, the matching at the. That, that's at where the, I was going. Because the, the, the Trey yeah. BN matches were found in the office. It was on the table. Yep. Yo, I forgot all and about that. And there we go. So did I. Until Yo. I was looking at the and I was like, wait, <laughs> Mr. Tigre, something I can tell the court about these matches? Matches? What are you talking about? We found them in the office of Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. <laughs> that restaurant. What? If you've really never been to Trey Bien before. How'd you get these fucking matches, bitch? <laughs> what was that book of <laughs> restaurant matches doing at your desk? He's been super out of my stuff now, do wise guy. What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no bra controlling me. What? Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, witness? I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry, fucking <laughs> I ain't no pussy. Cat, I'm gonna <laughs> go back on what I said. But okay, I was at the joint that day. But what? But listen, good, alright. I might have been there, but I still never met that kid. Ah, uh, this is a weird smell. <laughs> well, well. Tastes weird, too. <laughs> Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. I'm this close to proving it was him. Mm -hmm. He did meet Glen Elk that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. Bite your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Blood sprays <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, what was right. that noise supposed to portray? I was <laughs> supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table stiff as concrete. I feared if the place wasn't hot already, it was going to be so I split. I had the cop signs on my way out and went straight to the back, uh, straight, went straight back to my office. You okay there? <laughs> yes, maybe. <laughs> okay. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold that if I went on any longer, I'm going to make it the normal express. No more stupid questions. <laughs> no problem. What? Anytime try pressing you on something relevant. I'll see he pays the penalty. Uh, but Mr. Gajo, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little ham of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Y -y yes, sir. <laughs> Special Express ain't cheap, right? Just so you know how you're spaying. <sighs> oh, man. Doesn't the roll law mean anything around here? Nope. Not at all, apparently. Nope. All right, I trade in. Hmm. We now need to then. switch our judge with like a hard ass that won't take no shit. I know. So, is this gonna be one of the ones where if I press anything, it's gonna penalize me, or if I press harder, it's gonna penalize me? Um, so, maybe it wasn't gonna take place at Tenderlander at all then? The kid was making the fuss about coming to the office. It's always that way when I wanna talk about repayments. And I got the best punching bag you ever seen in there, any issues? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's because of the punching bag that people are scared to come? Yeah. So, that's why you decided to meet at Trebian? You're going over old ground again, Trite. Said sorry. You just earned yourself a penalty. Oh. Now suck it down. You will suck down the penalty, Miss Wright, and you will like it. Ow. Okay. On to the next one then. <laughs> okay, so I want to be careful what I press. So when I opened the door to the joint, saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out of the table, stiff as concrete. All right. I'll try one by one. An ugly scene? What do you mean? What do you mean? The witness has already told us, Trite, which makes that question irrelevant. But, but. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> I limit myself 70 cups of coffee during the trial. Yes, we know. That's the rule. Yes, we know. You limit the number of times you take a penalty, Trite. Or you guess it looked like the inside of a chimney, ashes. Chimney, ashen. It was or two ashen. words, <laughs> two sentences. 
Don't make. Okay. It was just. Uh, I keep fucking up. That's what it is. So. All right. So let me don't think. Don't keep here. fucking up. <laughs> all right. When I'm done with drawing someone ugly scene. The guy was laid out of the table, stiff as concrete. I figured the place was hot already. It was going to be. I heard the cops on my way out and went straight back to my office. Wait. Well, Nick, what do you think? He's running out of ways to avoid the truth. I ain't press him fast before he has time to think things through. Gotta come right back at him with a contradiction. Be careful what you press him on, though, or you'll get penalized, okay? I think it's the police part that I... That part's what screams to me right now, so really? I'm gonna go with that. Cop signs on my way out. Because with that, we can at least get time frames and stuff. This feels like something I should press, so... You went straight back. Did a bout of guilt suddenly hit you for what you did? What are you trying to say? You're trying to tell me you say you've never been guilty of nothing? Um... Uh. <laughs> we don't have our crosses to bear. Oh, we have to swallow the dark we secrets. All have we all have to swallow the dark secrets we hide. Like this. <laughs> Courtroom's not exactly the place to talk about dark secrets, is it? No! It seems you've done it again, Mr. Wright. Another relevant line of questioning. I must impose God. a penalty accordingly. Damn it! Wow! There's not much that I'm finding here that can. Says guys, I think the place is hot already. So, uh, all right, so let's do this. So you didn't actually set foot inside the restaurant then. The tiger's a busy cat. I don't hang around for no one. I ain't got time to be caught without the murder investigation. So when exactly did you pick up the matches? Their matches just inside the front door. Our detective friend wound up in trouble with the chef after taking five bucks home. Oh Jesus! Poor Gumshoe. It's almost enough to make a man cry. <laughs> oh wow, that that's the one that didn't get me hurt? <laughs> what? But that seemed irrelevant. What? Alright, I'll press this one if I get fi okay, whatever. You mean you <laughs> saw Glenn Oak's dead body? I guess I did, but I only saw him from behind. He was wearing some raggy bit of cloth he called a hat. Now what time was this? I don't know. <laughs> huh? You know what was when anything else in the world watches? Round watches. What? I ain't got to blow my buzz on way thick, dig it in, Pecker. Out of interest, Mr. G-Ray, what, what winds you up the second most? Huh? What does you think? Square watches. I, uh, what? Is this guy for real? Look, all I need to know was that some bell was going down in that place. Okay, so those two didn't hurt me at all. No. But they didn't take me anywhere. No, they did not. So, nothing screams contradiction about him being on the table like that. This is what, but I don't have anything that fucking end my life. Uh, no. Um. I. All right. So what evidence do we have? We have the matches. We have the medical papers. We got Gumshoe's lunchbox. <laughs> we got the million radio. We have radio. his bike scooter. We got thing. MC Bomber. We have the fake paper badge that we haven't used for anything yet. I don't think we're going to need that yet. No. We've got the calendar move the tiger. We got that. We've got... We can't do that without Gumshoe's fucking thing. Oh, yeah. We're waiting on that. I bet you it's going to have his fingerprints on it. I mean, that's our last hope is that it has to. Yeah. Um, the thing is, what do we do until we get that in? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't I am honestly kinda lost on this uh, one. Our plans. Sean's loan contract. Scooter. There's so many things that tie things, but there's nothing that makes sense to what he said so far to Alright, it's supposed to meet the kid at the restaurant, so I want to be seen, stuff is concrete. This is how I play it. I heard kind of the way out of the office. You didn't go straight back to your office. You went to the fucking. You went to the park. He did. Remember where he found it? That's where he found his scooter. That's because he was at the park. And this is all oh, a month yeah, later. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. Never mind. Yeah. My favorite place in Hunter Ray was going to be, so I split. Uh. Wait a minute. Actually. What? If he only walked it, well, 
No, I guess he could have walked around the corner and still seen it. Yeah. Because I was going to say if he only walked in the front and saw him dead and then left, he wouldn't be able to see him over the table. Well, no, he wouldn't have been able to see it when he opened the door. Okay, I'm not sure which one to press it to, but I think that's what I'm on now. Yeah, because you have to, like, you have to keep walking in. Yes. Yes, Boom. I put on that one. There we go. Hoo wee. You're something a lone collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tiger? Tigre? <laughs> Same thing. No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. Yep. Uh, and no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. Oh, that sounded cool. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? New line of relevant questioning? Nope. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. Tigre. From there, your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Yeah. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. As now what I just said, I saw the back of the kid's head. Uh-uh, there's a wall there. Yeah. Unfortunately for you, that is not possible. If you were to think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables... Yep. ...is a tall partition. Why, that's true! Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. Yep. Which means you walked all the way in. Ooh, he's sweating. Uh. So, from the entrance to Trebian, you couldn't have seen the victim see. But you did see the victim that day because you met with him. Boom. Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. Mm -mm. But the defense just proved the point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glen Elg, but a fake. What? You remember, boy? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out a charade. Yeah. That will do. The trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? Huh? You say the killer murdered Glen Elg, and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Victor Kudo? In that case, Mr. Wright revealed the identity of this criminal to the court. Obviously, brutal. No. Okay, I mean, wait, 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 I went too far. There we go. Yeah. Obviously, the killer is Furio T. Gray. No one else could have done it. What? What? Well, witness. <laughs> now that's cute. He's thinking of pinning this on the tiger. Maybe he's don't understand. The tiger is king of the jungle. So I dare you to say it again. Come on, you got the guts. You, you, you can't threaten me, me Mr. Tigre. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. <laughs> oh my god, I'm hiding. Mr. Wright! <laughs> Sounds to me like it must be you, old man. You got guts, I give you that. M -m 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 Mr. Wright, do not leave me to handle this alone. <laughs> Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. M -m Mr. Kudo? Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see just the victim. Oh, no, no, no. A second girl bought him a cappuccino, but she put something in it. There's no question about it. If she's very confused, put some more about it in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains he saw the accused put the poison into the coffee. Bleh. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned the coffee. <laughs> very impressive, Mr. Godot. <laughs> Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. <laughs> Found your pen at last, Trite. D it was in my pocket. Jesus. <laughs> but any anyway, <laughs> Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glen Elg, and the waitress from behind. Mm -hmm. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was yep. also part of the show. This is where she's going to come into play. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Spurred, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. 
and someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kuro witnessed? I mean, we've been saying this for a little while now. Yeah. Boop. Clearly, <laughs> Obviously, it's Gumshoe. <laughs> well, who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee of Tender Lender. He's making a big mistake. Do you know who Viola's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Stop shaking, Nick. Wait, 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 where, where was I? Yes, the defendant, this bird, has stated the following. Uh, all right, that's me. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table, it's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy, and she had a kind of cackling laugh. Yeah. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table is nobody, but Miss Bird seems to have seen. Yep. The earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when the eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show is supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real, and once for show. And, Mr. Fiora Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime... ...is you. Yeah. Well, witness, what have you got to say? That's cute. So, sorry? He's alright. I can do with a guy like you around. But what do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm gonna have to charter a jet to get me to a meeting now, uh but... I gotta give you the more th thing, the more thing to think about before I go. You okay? There's one more thing to think about before I go. <laughs> Something to think about. He's got all wrapped up nice, all right, but he's missed one thing real important. But that can't be. I was in the joint that day, and I met that kid too. Huh? But I couldn't have poisoned him, you see? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? What a troublemaker. Troublemaker. There's another cup. Let's go need another one for the road. <laughs> Gulp. Mm. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Jesus. Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. What happened that day at Trebian between yourself and the victim? Uh, well then. Ties of the victim. Ooh oh, man. Oh, I got the burps. Mm. Yeah, I loaned out cash about $100,000. That day we was due to have a little chat. Get it as payback date, see? So anyways, it tells me he's not got, he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. Though I just hadn't done what she had done, everything would have been over. Now, now I, I see that the principal amount of loan you loaned to Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, you just got the vision to take into account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's fast and fast. I thought that was, was twice as principal. Yeah. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, it was one lucky kid. He got the half a million just in time. To die. <laughs> so I ain't had no reason to kill the kid. And if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? Hmm. He has to have one, but what is it? We the know program. The yeah. yeah. But is there a place we're going to be able to put the motive? Yeah. Let's see. Number one, we're going to save. Yes. Save. 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 All right, the payback date. Back up, start screaming. We're lucky. Okay, so nothing. Then the guy when he starts screaming. So anyway, he tells me he's not gonna pay up. Now, technically, that's it because the biggest thing that he was gonna do is he was gonna sell that program to him as his way to get back. Yeah. But when he won the lottery, he was going to be like, oh, I don't need to give you this program. And yeah. Tigra was probably pretty pissed. Alright, let me press it. Because a program is much more valuable than 
you know, just straight up money. Yeah. Was there anyone else in the restaurant at the time? I don't remember. <laughs> if there's no one there, I'll wear that ridiculous tiger shirt for a month. Mr. Armstrong, Maggie, and if I'm right, Riley Cadaverini were all there at the time. So the victim had intended to repay you from his lottery winnings from the beginning? Seems that way to me. But, but you wouldn't normally expect to win the lottery, would you? Huh. <laughs> the undying belief that your next roll end the worst losing streak you ever had. So it defines a true gambler. Uh, well, he makes it sound so he, cool. Yeah. And he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Don't be tempted, Nick. You haven't got the willpower for it. I know it is that kid took a shot and he got lucky in the end. Boy, that judge voice is killing me. I can barely do Maya's voice. <laughs> you think your voice is dying. Anyways. I've told the, you. The waitress, you mean. The girl with the glasses at the fitness chair. That's what I mean. She hadn't gotten the way things would have been. Bada bing, bada boom, over and done with. <laughs> yeah, push all on this. Uh, gonna save again quick. I mean, we know what he's gonna say when Maggie did. How things would have been. How things would have been. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? As y'all over there were, I'm talking about the cash, the moolah. I was there to get my hundred grand back. That's all. I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before that witness got in the way. Waitress. <laughs> Waitress. Mm, as far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loan, Mr. Tigray had no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. Tiger's motive, huh? Didn't have no other reason to kill the guy. And there we wait, yep. wait, 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 let me, 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 let me save, 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 let me save. Where is that at? There it is. Boom. Thank yes. you. Yes. So you just intended to get back the hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Algoji, correct? I loan the guy the cash, so that's my right. Nope. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the hundred grand was what you were really after. Oh boy. <laughs> when are you getting that right? You have no idea. What else would a money lender be after other than money? You have no idea, do you? Oh, the money lender was after money. But money in a totally different league. Yeah, millions. The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. Oh. Uh. What is that? A computer virus, your honor. A coaster? A virus <laughs> called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? What does one of those do? <laughs> I guess the beard is the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age. Or isn't the only part of the Stone Age. I'll explain it to you later, your honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. Se several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would be normally bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elk had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Glen Elk was a programmer. A highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elg put in put up in order to borrow the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're trying to suggest the witness's motive is to get hold of that program? Yeah. Exactly. The witness may have poor fashion sense, <laughs> but he is by no means an idiot, right? A man like him could get his hands on the one million dollars that was going to murder. Of course he could, provided that he had time. Mm -hmm. But if he had needed the money right then, when the pressure's on, oh, the luxury yeah. of choice tends to disappear. The hospital bill. Yeah. It's all coming together. You seem to have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Oh, we will. Why did Mr. Tigre need money to the tune of one million dollars? I mean, we never said it was one million exactly. We said it was worth a bunch, but I mean, there yeah. you go. Thanks for the hint. Boom. <laughs> in December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. Ugh. <laughs> About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? Yep. An accident involving a car and a scooter in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How much of this do you know? <laughs> these medical paper documents the treatment of the young woman in question. Yeah, she According straight up these, gave those to us. <laughs> yeah, and Gumshoe helped us keep them. Yeah. According to these, her operation cost $1 million. 
And yet when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars a preposterous sum. Someone should sue those HMOs. <laughs> No one would pay a bill like that. The medical association got wind of it. The hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. Oof. But Mr. T Ray had no choice but to pay, because his very life depended on it. Yep. Gah! It's just like you ah. said. They totally took advantage of the situation. Yeah. Ah. Ah, you say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright? Indeed, it did. Simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Yep. <laughs> did you say? Cadaverini. Yep. Uh-huh. Bruno Cadaverini. Mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city and... Doden grandfather was precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to require the one million dollars Bruno Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glenn Elg's life to pay your debt. Yep. One life for another. Hmm? On the day of the murder, Mr. Tigray's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glenn Elg had no way of paying back the $100,000, and Mr. Tigray knew it. But then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigray would prefer to say never happened. Yep. But he can't, and neither can I. The lottery win? Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won half a million dollars on the lottery. Yep. Which left me to with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. Mm. So he resorted to illegitimate means. Yeah, see, he, he put it in there. That's crazy. That's what Maggie said. Yeah. He murdered Glenn Elg and then made his next move. To frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Miss Tigray posed as Glenn Elg. While Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. Yep. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. <laughs> the witness being the one we heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chief could have been kept in the, the dark the, about the, that. The chef. <laughs> the chef. Fuck. <laughs> Keep saying chief. Yeah. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Yep. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong got the witness money, too. Half a million dollars, in fact. Yep. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tiger's plan. Tigre. Tigre. Fuck. Tigre, Tiger, same thing. <laughs> Close enough. Order, order. Silence, or I will click. <laughs> He's put on a good show, Spikey. Spikey? Huh? If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. Your Santa dressed up like that kid created witness and framed someone. If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. Fingerprints! I agree. You, you do? <laughs> Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why I took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Mrs. Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright? Oh boy. Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, Trite? Oh fuck, oh fuck. Whoa. Four. What was this trick you said I didn't get Mr. Tigray performed to frame the accused? Ugh. Oh, he put the bottle in her apron. We can't prove that, though. Because it doesn't have his fingerprints. Oh. I honestly... Honestly. It's a shot in the dark, but why else would we have the badge? Because what was the first thing that he did? Oh, yeah. He impersonated us. He performed all right. He, he already... Has technically, he already defended himself once. If we didn't catch this again, he would have been away with it. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. If not, the points are down because I didn't save. Here but I'll save afterwards if not. Yes. Oh, my God. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. Uh -huh. You are, dude. Uh, yeah. Consider yourself insulted, Your Honor. Mr. Tigray. 
Eden just poses the victim on the day in question. A month ago in this very court, you posed as me. He gets to clear his name now, too, yeah. Uh. What? That's... that's... The truth. But... But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Uh, uh, although... Now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? Yeah. No doubt it was you, standing in here, this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix tried to put up the most disreputable shabby defense I'd ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Jesus yeah, Christ, um, Godot's in like super fuck mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Whoa, Forget about it, dear. There's that. <laughs> Huh? I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You... You made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? He's like, shut up. Have you no pride, sir? <laughs> Jesus is getting heated. It is. This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court, we deal with people's lives. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor! Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge, with the vested power to hand down the verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. T. Gray are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far! Come, Phew! Yeah. You say impersonated Glen Elg. You say impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. Fingerprints! You don't have a shred of evidence that the victim poisoned the victim's coffee. Witness. The, wi the, victim's <laughs> coffee. <laughs> ah. the victim poisoned the victim. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sucks to be you, right? Sucks to be you, Don't mess you with the right tiger, now. you gotta get mauled, you just got that. All you managed to do here was chase him around a bit. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Gumshoe! Ha. Don't you ha. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. Yeah, you will. If I just have one more piece of evidence. <sighs> one more piece of evidence and maybe yes, I can get Maggie yes. off the hook. No, no. This witness's cross-examination is over. You're free to go, Mr. T. Gray. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Um, hello? There, there we go. There we go. Okay. That classic presentation. Yana, sir. Yep. Oh! <laughs> Wait! He gets his own <laughs> little thing. Oh, that was cute. It was. D detective. Detective. That's you. Er, detective, I'm you. <laughs> so I took so long, pal. I, I, I staked everything on this. My badge, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this, too. Your heart meaning Maggie. Oh. Oh, it's adorable. Oh. Anyways. What is it, detective? It's an obvious, pal. It's the final dice of piece of evidence. What? What? I got it right here. But no one's moving. Okay. Whoa. Um. Uh. uh okay. What's going on? I... Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the lab results from the lab. The results? About the prince, pal, from this medicine bottle. Oh! So, do you know who the prince belonged to now? Do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So, tell us that they're the tigers, right? I knew it! <laughs> you bet. Boom! Clear as crystal all over the bottle. That fury thing rice paw prince, all right. That's great! We've got him now, Nick! Uh... What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's let everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Alex's coffee. Oh. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle... That really doesn't make any difference now. 
Oh. I knew it. Great, no matter how hard I try, I'm never any use. Oh! Hey, don't be so hard on yourself! This is the last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's alright, I'm a real loser. It's no breaking news to me, pal. Oh my god! Wait, I wonder who I that feel like be. that's probably Mew... Maggie. Maggie? Maybe. Maybe. Let's go for it. Um... Yeah. Detective Gumshoe... Ma Maggie! You've been working on something... for me? Uh... Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry, I'll get you out of your hand now. I'll get out of your hand now. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, wait! <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, he is gone. <laughs> Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. There's gotta be something that we can do. Rub the fingerprints onto the poison bottle. It's our only hope that we have something with this bottle now. It's our last chance. Oh. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Uh, yeah. <laughs> About that. He sees how nervous we are, Don't too. Don't keep us on suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally. We can assume it's evidence that'll actually stand up in court. Can we? Think, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more time he's gonna waste? I ain't been in no court before. Which is why I shouldn't have had to blow things out of proportion. Uh, no doubt, given the nature of the evidence, I will speak for it will speak for itself. <laughs> Oh, yep. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. Mm. I'm really backed into a corner here. But maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let us guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Ho! Oh. Present this final decisive piece of evidence to the court. Huh. It almost makes it. Uh, okay, I'm get, it, they're almost making it seem too herring? obvious to present that. Oh, we're just, we're gonna go with it and we're gonna see what happens. Yeah. But it could be a red herring. This is the fence's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's? Your Honor. Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. T. Gray. What? Huh. But, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone in here knows what this bottle contains. Yep. Except one man. One person's courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that paint looking bottle, is that what you're saying? Well, what in the hell's in it anyway? Phony trial, a phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Seems the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. <gasps> Phoenix, Mr. Right. Tigre, <laughs> this is a decisive piece of evidence that'll prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains the poison, potassium cyanide. Yeah, I mean that's now obvious yeah. when I look at it. Instead of the other ones, this bottle contains. Potassium cyanide. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, Your Honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. Ugh. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, I found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? <laughs> you make a good clown, you know that? What? You just ain't never gonna get this to stick. He's just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger? Uh, the bottle looks like this, pal. Uh, <laughs> that's the, the it, this is the route that it's gonna go. Oh, uh, like like rever he's, reverse psychology. He's let us guard down. So he's gonna tell us that he knows it's not in the bottle. Uh, Cause how else would he know what's not what's in the bottle? Yeah. A bluff? I see straight through him, Phoenix. Right. That ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. <laughs> this is. No no, 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 no. This is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. 
Don't mess with a tiger, you're gonna get ripped to shreds. The sign of that bottle was brown and it was made of glass. Oh. That cheap piece of trash. Don't look nothing like it. Boom. And now I'm just kind of like. <laughs> and he's like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's just quiet. Did I say something? Oops. Uh, <laughs> did I do something wrong? <laughs> he's gonna do that smirk of his. Got him. At last. Got him. But what? Why's everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is the bottle you're referring to? Is this the bottle you're referring to? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the bottle of sign I was in. But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't think I was looking for you people. That looks just playing games. <laughs> Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. <laughs> Tell that guy where you go. Where to go? <laughs> you still haven't figured it out. <laughs> Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? <laughs> you were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. So he has no <laughs> info. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you should have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Boom. Uh. Uh. Yep. But just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Uh. Um, uh, you still know who you're messing with. Yeah, yeah. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black yeah, market. Yeah, yeah. You say I'm gonna let some jumped up suit the better me? Yep. Sure. I see this is phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. Boom. Uh, he's gonna turn into a puppy dog. Oh, God. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, Satan, calm down. Whoa. Oh my god. Uh. You okay there, big cat? No. <laughs> he died. I think he just got what? sent back. Did he send the. Did he pop the power out? What the fuck? What? What's going on? <laughs> it looks like a blackout. Uh. Well done. Right. Um. Uh. I saved my seventeenth cup. Did he throw it at me in the dark? Uh, I saved my seventeenth cup of coffee just for you. Ow. Savor it. Uh, <laughs> While you watch the police restrain your prey. What the fuck? What a fucking weirdo you are, Godot. Can for we just real? talk about this real quick? Oh my god. Mr. Wright, you caught the tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, he won't let be let go. <laughs> okay, then. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> wow, Judge. <laughs> now then, how are things going with Mr. T. Gray, Mr. Godot? He's being arrested on suspicion of the murder of Glenn Elg, Your Honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it weren't for that one slip of the tongue. Those meddling kids. I knew you were going to say that. Because <laughs> I thought it too. Fury O.T. Gray is a truly frightening criminal. <laughs> the truly frightening one is that defense attorney over there. Godot. We are a phoenix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. Do it. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. Not guilty. Yay. Pull that confetti. Oh, fucking goddamn, was the confetti confetti? There's nothing on the <laughs> ceiling. What the fuck? Oh my god, it's a portal to hell. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. Don't look up, Maya. <laughs> what? Ah! <laughs> My eyes! <laughs> it's not safe for your pure eyes. <laughs> Mr. Wright! <coughs> I, 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie. I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. It wasn't me. <laughs> but now I feel like I can forgive him. It, 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 that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick! In the doorway. Oh. Detective Gumshoe. Oh. Yes, I'll be heading no, off then. No, See get, you around, no, pal. Get your butt back here. Get your fucking ass back here, Gumshoe. <laughs> there we go. Uh, 
Detective Gumshoe. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go grab you some baggy. Uh, 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 Thanks. Uh, uh, you're welcome. Uh, Awkward silence. <laughs> uh, I knew you were innocent all along. Mm. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh, well, I was, uh. Well, I guess I'll be heading off then. See you around. No! God damn it, good, but wait up, detective. He just fucking ran off again. Maggie! Why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. Thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even any use! But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. <laughs> Look, there still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should up Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. The lunchbox? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. There's no reason I have it again. No. Uh, Maggie. <clears throat> you know Detective Gumshoe's really been worried about you through all this. I, I wanted to believe that, sir. But on that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up! He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. Oh, God. I've got to prove to the gum she really cares about her. He made you a I giant know. lunch. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. Yep. How about Boom. lunch? Here you are. A present to celebrate your freedom. Th that's... A present from Detective Gumshoe made with a ton of love. He said you lost weight and he was worried about you. D Detective Gumshoe... I... I actually really like weenies, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? Of course, go on ahead. Oh, my like, yeah, <laughs> food, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so, how is it, Maggie? It's, it's really good. Oh, so pure. So adorable. So pure. So the case of Phony versus Genuine comes to an end. <sighs> the false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. Ah. Well, as well as that plate, and who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Get married! To Gumshoe. Yes. Poor guy needs something in his life. <laughs> he does, like damn. And that's the end of episode three, Recipe for Turnabout. Indeed! Jesus crust the potatoes. <laughs> and next begins an interesting one. Episode four. Damn! Turnabout Look at beginnings. that new outfit, yo. Yes. New. Yes. A brand new episode has been added, and we're going to go to that episode next time. Edgeworth is back. Yeah. Gotta get prepared for that again. I haven't done that in a long ass time. You haven't. God damn.